break in the far north with another two lives lost on our roads. That now takes the road toll for the far north uh, to 13 deaths in 14 weeks. Uh, clearly, the uh, the message to a lot of our road users just aren't getting, just isn't getting through uh, at all. And uh, sadly, the uh, the uh, the deaths on the weekend uh, are, are a testament to that. Uh, there was also a number of other arrests. Can you tell us about some of the more serious speeding events? Yes, on the weekend we've yet again seen some blatant displays of stupidity by some road users in the far north. Yesterday uh, at Machilba on the Atherton Tablelands, a 17-year-old was detected travelling at 201 kilometres an hour in a 100 kilometre hour zone in wet weather. That is just a, a fatal waiting to happen. We also had on Sunday another driver um, near Coa. Um, detected at 194 kilometres an hour in a 100 zone. Um, yet again, the, there is no excuse for those speeds and at that speed, all it takes is just one, one minute slip and there is no redemption from that. Are you shocked by the rate the road toll in the funnel appears to be rising compared to the other um, states and cities? The, the road toll in the far north is the worst that um, nearly every officer in the far north can remember. Uh, at this stage we're only 14 weeks into this year and we've lost 13 lives. Uh, the police are out there every single day. Um, over the Easter break there was hundreds and hundreds of hours put in by our police officers patrolling uh, the roads and, and yet we are still having the, uh, the fatal accidents occur. What do you need to consider? Is it the time to put in things like um, double the merits all the time, or is there is there something? I know there's a bit of chat about that in Brisbane this morning on, on Talkback Radio about double the merits. Would you consider any more extreme options to try and bring the road toll down? Well, any matter of policy or legislative change like that is clearly a matter for the government of the day. What we will do as the police is just continue our enforcement efforts uh, out there, the education, uh, talking at every opportunity to everyone on the road to take ownership of their driving, take ownership of the safety for themselves, their family and other road users. After the last couple of battles we had in the weekend, you guys have put together a bit more of a task force to address this. What's been the outcome of that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, since that time, the uh, road strategy for the far north has been put in place. And what that does is place the, uh, the ownership of the road policing in the actual patrol groups um, to uh, formulate operations, activities, and to get out and target um, uh, offenders on the roads at the peak times. Uh, clearly, because we've got such a, uh, such a diverse uh, district up here, it's not a one-size-fits-all. And so we, it's very much up to the officers in charge of those particular uh, areas to uh, make sure that they have got police on the road at the right time targeting the correct offences. There are a number of uh, mobile police units set up late last week um, in an effort to sort of curb the incidents of speeding and drink driving and whatnot. What were the results of um, those? Were many people reporting with a high blood alcohol? Yeah, yet again, this is another statistic that we should not be proud of, but there were 35 drink drivers detected in the far north over the Easter break. Um, there were over 250 life-endangering uh, offences on the roads detected. So our police are out there just every day trying to enforce uh, the rules, but it gets back to the people, back to the drivers, to make sure they're doing the right thing in the first place. You know, it's, it's not brain surgery at all. These are common sense things that we repeat over and over again, and that's to slow down, don't get distracted, don't use your mobile phone, have your seatbelt on, and for goodness sake, don't drink and drive. Thank you. Thank you.